Okay, I'm gonna go live. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. Welcome today to our annual Marquee event for Women's Impact Network. My name is Vanessa Hickman. I am the chair of the Denver chapter of WIN. So I just want to lead you guys through what to expect today. Um, actually, first, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with the coffee tasting since everyone has it. We have a great hearing. All worked out here, so Nathan, feel free to come on up. Okay, awesome. Um, hello, um, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Nathan, and for the vast majority of you that don't know me, I'm the store manager of 6339 in Highland Ranch, Colorado. Um, and what I have for you today is a Rwanda Abacandekawa. It's a mouthful, but the word means we love coffee. And I find this coffee fitting for today on many levels. Uh, this co-op is almost 50 to 60 percent women, which is one of its kind in the world. That's that's very unheard of around uh, the world, the other coffee growing regions. And this co-op in particular has impacted the economy uh, for these widows of this giant um, civil war that occurred in the 90s in Rwanda, devastated the economy, um, and it, it basically stabilized. Coffee has stabilized the country, and Starbucks has been a spearhead for that. So I chose this coffee for that reason, um, and I love the story that it tells. I love that it is very empowering. Um, so let's go ahead and begin this tasting. Um, let's go ahead and smell. We want to get a nice See what kind of aromatics we got uh, exiting this cup. So what I'm looking for is a nice citrus, like almost mandarin, uh, with a nice caramel layer, like undertone underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and slurp this coffee and coat our palate and see where it hits the front. Okay. <laughs> Is this your first coffee tasting bread? Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> it's meant to be a loud slurp because you want to spray your entire palate, so it's not impolite to just slurp the heck out of it. But if you notice, uh, this coffee is pretty balanced. Um, it's got a nice body that sits on your, the weight of the body sits on your tongue. Um, and you also get the nice acidity hitting the very sides of your uh, saliva glands. And that actually gives us a nice body balance. Um, and what I love about this coffee and all African coffees is as the cup cools, the characteristics change. So you're going to get a lot more citrus and floral notes as the cup comes to a cool. Um, and those of you who drink iced coffee know that from our iced coffee. Um, but straight off when it hits you in the mouth, I get the caramel remote. So. And I've also prepared a pairing for you guys. This is a three was meant to be a three course pairing. Um, so I have a raspberry gouda, and then I also have a an espresso crusted gouda. And I want to follow that with chocolate, caramel, and sea salt. I like to do sweet and savory pairings um, to really show the diversity of the bean. So. <laughs> I have a few more. <laughs> Asking you shall receive. Yep. <laughs> so that cheese is really going to mellow out the body and really pronounce. Um, a nice bit of flavor in the cheese. Um, I like the raspberry because it's fruity and it complements the natural fruity flavor of the coffee. Um, and as you guys move on to the salted caramel pairing, the salt is very pronounced um, and the caramel actually solidifies the caramel in the coffee. So. Okay. 
Awesome. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So from there, after we have the coffee tasting, we have a guest speaker today that we brought in. Um, I'll introduce her here shortly. Um, and then we also have several partners that have been around the block a few times, if you will, in their Starbucks journeys. Um, so they're going to be following up Brooke's presentation today, and they're pretty much going to be an open book for you. So any questions you have about development, what's worked, what hasn't worked, um, what advice they have in their current role for you, it's pretty much off the limits. Or any nothing is off limits. Awesome. And then we'll explain a little bit more about the transition from WDN to WIN and how you can get involved later this year. So, did I sell my position and all that stuff yet? I don't think I did. I always forget that part. I'm sorry. So again, my name is Vanessa Hickman. I'm a six-year partner, uh, about four years in WGN or WIN. Uh, I currently work in the PRSC as a partner resources associate. So, and I am the chair of the Denver chapter of WIN, along with Carrie here, who's my co-chair. And I'll let her introduce herself. Um, like she said, I'm the co-chair of the w now WIN. Um, I am a 13-year partner. I store manager at Tatiana Quebec. I am been with WIN for four years. Um, two years as the networking color lead and now the co-chair. Um, previously we were the WDN Women's Development Network and now we branded as the Women's Impact Network. And we have a new mission statement. So igniting the power of women through partners, allies, and communities. This just happened in the middle of March. Um, so we're kind of trying to spread the word at each of these meetings. Question? Um, is this like company wide or just Denver? <coughs> well, yeah, this came from Seattle, so the it's a soft rollout. Yeah, <laughs> we decided to do it when they did it. Um, so we're trying to change all the what do you say? Change it up mid-year, just rolling with the budget. Right. So, yeah. Keep it going. I think it'll be more broadly communicated in FY19, um, but we haven't solidified all of our events yet, so we just decided to go with it. And these pictures here are just a few snapshots of previous events we've had. Uh, so this one right here is our Drunk for Success for Nation Day Warriors, where we select to use clothing and help support them in the boutique that Drunk for Success has. Um, that middle picture was last year at our annual event. That's scary. <laughs> There's a few other repeat offenders in here, if you will. Um, and then over on the tail end, we had our previous year's event where we had our seed networking, not seed dating, seed networking event. Uh, to learn about different positions within Starbucks, just outside of the normal retail path. So we're gonna skip that. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Brooke. Um, I've actually known Brooke for what, like 15 years, I think. Some time. Like pretty much half my life. Um, she was actually my first boss when I graduated college. And she was one of the first people to really challenge me to just not be okay with the status quo and really push myself. Um, and it got me really comfortable with feedback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stories to follow with a mixer later. <laughs> I'm in HR now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so but when the, the board, we were just talking and we were trying to plan this event and we're like, you know, what, what can we do? Who can we bring in from outside of Starbucks? Yes, partners want to hear who's been there, what they've done, how they've done it, and how to develop their network inside of Starbucks. But there's life outside of Starbucks. It is just coffee. We need to focus on ourselves. And we're like, who would be a good influential woman who's kind of been there, done that, focused on development, balancing their work life, personal life, personal development. And I was like, who do you know? Who do you know? And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, Brooke has moved on from our retail path and has her own business. So I invited her to speak with us today. And she is someone who's definitely passionate about development. So Hopefully her message will resonate with you, and I'll let her tell a little bit more. Just kidding. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
you. Well, I'm super excited to be here today, you guys, because like Vanessa is speaking to, since I was a little girl, I've always been passionate about development and kind of started in my family situation growing up in a family of five. Okay, mom and dad had me when they were 19, so young parents. And I have a younger brother and a younger sister. And my sister was born with a brain tumor. Okay, and so her first few years of life was crazy scary and a really long recovery process from that where as a young person I knew wow there are real limitations to being able to do more to achieve more to experience things in life and you know here was my sister who would never drive a car because she can't see and couldn't eat on her own but she was the happiest person you've ever met and that has really inspired me to kind of develop this mantra around development if you can why not? Right? You can, why not? So in my business today, you know, I've been able to bring this passion for development, a lot of the things that I did in a corporate setting, and match it with uh, my psychological understandings and the counseling work that I do with people. And I like to bring psychology and business success together. And so my hope for today is that I help you guys look at your development just a little bit differently. Okay, so I'm really going to challenge you guys to dig deep to grow. I'm really going to challenge you to be vulnerable, be honest with yourself, and think about like what's actually getting in your way of having and being what you want. And, and then I'm going to give you guys tools on how to overcome those things. Okay, so a little bit about our chat today and what you can look forward to is under knowing yourself, we're going to spend a little bit of time crafting your life vision. So where is it that you want to be? Where is it that you're going? And have you spent any time thinking about these things or dreaming big, like I like to call it? And then single-handedly, guys, in my personal life, and my professional life, with all my clients, the biggest thing that gets in their way is their mindset. So we are going to identify the biggest mind blocks that you face every day, and I'm going to give you real strategies on how to work through those things, okay? Um, dreams are amazing, goals are amazing, having a vision is really important, but without action and accountability, we don't go anywhere. So we're going to talk about how to own it and how to be accountable for your development. We're going to talk about networking, but from a um, developing an authentic connection standpoint. So how do you build a strong network both inside of Starbucks and outside to support where you want to go in your professional life? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how to remain inspired, and last but not least, and most important is the key things that really stood out for you today that hit you somewhere. We're going to talk about how do you apply that in your day-to-day, -day. so you don't just leave the concept, you leave the plans of how you're going to be a little bit different leaving this conversation. So you guys up for this? Yes. Okay. Do it. All right, so Vanessa was saying I was her first boss, so... A little bit about my professional background is I started out doing HR for Target. I was in college going nowhere fast, just living the dream, and got pregnant with my son my senior year, which was not the plan, okay, but you got to roll with the punches, and so I thought, gosh, I'm going to have to get a real job, one that has growth opportunities, benefits. One that I know I can take care of my son as a single mom and be okay, and I felt that Target was hiring. So here's lesson number one. Keep your eyes open for opportunity. Don't wait for them to come to you. Don't wait for someone to put it in your lap. Always be looking and seeing and feeling out what the opportunity in front of you might be, because that might be the one that really moves you forward. So I didn't think I was going to start in retail management, but I did an internship with Target, and I fell in love with the company. And I uh, started out as HR, then got promoted and got to do training and development for the newer executives, the newer managers coming up uh, the college campuses. And then um, was signed off to be, you guys call it a store manager, right? <coughs> we called it a store team leader. Nobody knows what that is. So anyway, so was signed off. And they sent me to this store called C48 to support because it was really struggling and it just lost their store manager. Operations were struggling, team was struggling, I, you know, so it all goes together. Anyways, I really wanted this store as my first assignment because it was the store that I did my internship in. So I said full circle. It was, it, 
in the community in which I went to high school in, so I felt connected to the community. And it was a challenge. I was going to prove something to somebody <laughs> if I could go in there and do it. Okay? So I asked for the store, and they said, no, bro, this is a second assignment store. This is not for, like, we don't want to scare you off. And I thought, okay, well, I'm here every day. Tell me the word. Like, let me just show you. So I started doing the job that I want. I started listening to the team and asking them what they needed help with. I started teaching them some things that could make a difference in their day to day. Uh, I started just showing up, right, regularly. And a couple months went by and I kept asking, can I have it? Can I have it? No, 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 no. Well, being my own advocate, which we're going to talk about today, and being pretty persistent, four months later, I earned the story. Okay, and so this was my first assignment, and this was where I met Vanessa and she worked for me. And we turned that store from the worst performing out of 63 stores to number one. I mean, we were amazing, right? Like, pretty much, pretty much I mean. amazing. So there's a couple more to this story that I want to start to apply to your story. Number one, do you know who you are and do you know what you want? Do you ask for what you want and do you believe you can do it? Because without any of those four components to this, none of that would have happened for me. So. Let's take a moment to think about where you want to be from here, or where do you want to go from here, rather, where do you want to be. So just by a show of hands, who has spent any time creating a life vision? Yes, 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 yes. Or even a vision board, right? Yeah? Okay. So a lot of times we don't schedule time to just sit and, like, plan our lives. And it's not all about having the perfect plan, just like I've already disclosed. You know, it wasn't my plan to have a baby in college or to start out in retail or even, you know, to launch my own business several years ago. So the plan has to be flexible, but without the image and the dream of what you think your potential could be, it's hard to stay motivated for where you're going. So um, did they get a handout? They didn't get their hand out. We'll do it around next. All right, we're going to hand out a little sheet um, for you guys to write some things down on. And you guys, if you have questions, just ask them. If you want me to restate something, please ask. If you want to apply your personal situation to any of the concepts, please do. The more you guys put your real story into this, the more you're going to get out of it.
as you start to create, or as you're brainstorming, I want you to start to create an image in your mind, okay? Feel free to close your eyes. I won't judge you. It actually helps the process. But just entertain me for a moment, okay? Close your eyes and start to imagine you in this place doing your thing, being wildly successful, feeling great, and pay attention to what that looks and feels like. Give you a minute to get there. If you're struggling to think about what that would be, that's okay. It is, that's okay. Maybe you don't get to dream all the time and this is a new thing for you and that's okay. We'll start today. So be paying attention to where you are, what you're wearing, hair looks like. I always have like the flyest outfit on in my image. <laughs> like I look good in my image. <laughs> Okay, I said dream big. <laughs> um, how does it feel? This part's really important. So as you imagine yourself living your best life, being your best self, what does that feel? What does it feel to delight your favorite customer or just delight your supervisor or see your team do something totally awesome that you've been training them on or to leave a speaking engagement and have somebody have a conference, like, what does that feel like? Okay. And when you have your image and you have your feeling, I want you to just kind of take a mental snapshot of that. Just click it, freeze it, frame it, and now name it. What would you call this person? Okay. And when you have that, write down the name on your sheet. Anybody brave enough to share? Yeah. Accomplished? Nice. What does accomplished feel like? Um, you're in a good spot. You're where you want to be. Everyone sort of around you. And you feel good about it. Not just yourself, but what you've done. Where you're at. I like that. Yeah, accomplished feels good. I love that. Anybody else? I know we're just getting warmed up, so it's kind of personal. <laughs> By the end, you guys will be crying and telling me your life story. It's okay. <laughs> well, I'll move on. So before we move on to the why, really quick, has, has anyone seen the documentary Finding Joe? No one? Oh, my gosh. It's all about following your bliss. So I watch it once a quarter to get reconnected to my vision and my why and, like, what I'm doing and what. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's awesome. Um, the next part in knowing yourself is connecting to your why. So I call this the anchor of development. Okay. So is developing and digging deep to grow an easy job all the time? No. No. Look at your face. You're like, it's tough sometimes. It's really uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. That's when you know it's working. Is when it's like, ugh. Okay. So there are a lot of reasons why we fall off track with our own development. It could be scary, it doesn't feel good, we have fear of failure. Maybe we went down a path and it wasn't the right one and we're starting over now. Um, maybe we just can't find the motivation and the ambition. There's a lot of things that get in our way of moving forward. But connecting to the why you started in the first place, why you're doing it, will absolutely catapult you into action mode in it, okay? So take a moment to think about your why. So if you were to create your life vision, why does that matter? Who are you doing it for? What's the purpose of it? Okay, maybe if you want to put your kids through college, maybe you want to be financially free because you didn't grow up with a lot. Maybe you have to take care of your sick parents. Maybe you want to leave an impact on women in leadership that helps them break barriers. That's fine. Maybe you just want a nice car. Like, no judgment here, but what's your why? Take a minute and write it down. Who is willing to share? Why do you want 
the best life for you. Yeah. I think I just want to feel um, accomplished. Yeah. So I was the first person from my family to graduate school. Right. Um, graduate college. What? I feel like that's my underlying drive. Like I just I want to be accomplished. I just don't want to settle for like one thing. Yeah. High five to being the first generation to do that. Yeah, do you get a scholarship for that? I put myself through junior college on scholarship. That's awesome. There's a scholarship for that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, just look at look what I did, right? What else? There's some other whys out there. Come on. Okay. I want to pay off my student loan. Yeah. So like getting rid of debt is a huge motivator for me. Nice. Yeah. I hear you. Coming to grad school. Yeah. <laughs> but worth it. Yeah. So being that free, right? That would feel amazing. Anything else? So if you're having one of those days where you know you're supposed to do something to grow, but you just don't want to for whatever reason, I want you to connect to the why and to remind yourself when you decided on your best day what you were going to accomplish. When you decided that, what was the frame of mind you were in versus now when you're having a bad day? Because it's really easy to put big plans into place when we're feeling good. It's really hard to follow through when we're not feeling good and we're human beings, and so we feel all the things. So this is something you guys can go back to. I don't want to show up today because I get nervous talking in front of people, but if I want to impact more than one-on-one, -on -one, I have to. So I'm going to push through and do it anyway. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? So the next thing is about believing in yourself. And this is where we get to this one. Okay. Managing a mindset. So when I say mindset, what are some things that come to your mind about that word? What does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. What is a mindset? It's self talk. Yeah. You talk to yourself. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely, guys. So, your mindset is basically the way in which you see the world. So, the way that you see yourself, the way that you see other people, the way that you see um, how the world works, your relation to it, and its relationship to you. It's basically the lens at which you look through and see, okay? And there's a lot of things that happen in our lives from the moment we're born until now that affect our mindset, okay? When we're born, we all have the rose-colored glasses, okay? But then life happens. And so maybe you had some scary things happen to you, and so the world is, isn't always a safe place. That affects your mindset. Maybe you were promoted and told you could do whatever you want by your parents. That affects your mindset. Maybe you were told you'd be nothing by your parents. That affects your mindset. Anything that happens that's distressing to us in our lives changes our brain chemistry. Okay? So today you're going to hear me address kind of the neuroscience behind development because it is what gets in our way, whether you realize it or not. A lot of it's subconscious, right? We don't even know it's happening. So my guess is there is something that has happened to every single one of you in this room that has you questioning something in your life or having a hard time buying in or believing that you could do something, okay? And so really quickly, I want to give you a little bit of background, of background on the brain. So raise your hand if you've ever had an anxious thought. Like anybody? <laughs> anybody? Okay, you're all normal. Is there anybody that's had that? I don't know if I can do that. Thought? Okay. Is there anybody? Oh, this is my favorite. Is there anybody that suffers from worst case scenario syndrome, where your brain constantly teaches you, <laughs> or not teaches you, tries to get you ready for the worst case scenario, and we like try to plan the outcome in every single situation? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're all normal. You're normal. So did you guys know that 80% of what we worry about never happens? 
And I think it's probably more than that, so I don't even know how they get the data on that. Um, but the point is, is that these normal human experiences get in our way of becoming our best self. So back in the caveman and women days, when our brain was first trying to figure some things out, it was definitely a more threatening situation, right? So it was a hunter-gatherer dynamic. It was very important that you were accepted into a group of people because if you were kicked out of your tribe or your group, you were more um, susceptible to get eaten or murdered. You had to worry about like animals eating you, okay? So we started getting really good in our brain at sensing danger and making sure we're safe back then. So if you imagine all these years of brain evolution, and you can start to see where I'm going with this. How good are we at comparing ourselves to others and sensing if we fit in and is this the spot for me and am I accepted and am I validated? How good are we at sensing danger by creating worst case scenarios? Um, how good are we at noticing what we could do better but really struggle to notice what we're kicking butt at, right? That's because our brain has evolved, but we're no longer in a threatening environment. So we're just an anxious group of animals, basically, okay? But you're normal, and today I'm going to give you some actual things you can do to make sure that doesn't get in your way of creating your life vision and growing. So um, just a little bit more uh, neuroscience here. So thoughts create hormones, which create feelings that we label emotions, which we take action from. So if you have, I want you guys to start to think about what your mind block might be as I'm describing it. So if you have a thought like, I don't think I can do that. That's a negative thought, okay? It is going to release a hormone called cortisol, which does not feel good in the body. When we don't feel good, we label that, I don't know, anger, disappointment, um, resentment, any of those, and we take action from that place, okay? And typically what happens is all that, that chain of events, the thought, the hormone, the feeling, and the action happens in a flash and you don't even know what's happening. But think about the decisions that you're making and how big and bold and brave you are when you're coming from that place. And so let's flip that around. You have the thought, I'm going to crush this talk today. That's a positive thought. That's going to release serotonin in my body. That's going to feel good. I'm going to feel ambitious, motivated, excited, you know, whichever. And I'm going to take action from that place. Okay? Which place is probably going to get you doing the things you need to do to grow? But how much of us are really all day long with telling ourselves how awesome we are? <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, this is work, you guys. This is work. If you want to get where you want to go, you've got to manage your mind. It doesn't just happen, okay? So start to think about what is the thing. And this is where I'm asking you guys to dig deep. What is the thing you tell yourself that maybe no one else knows about? that you think could be getting in your way of going for what you want, of doing more professionally, of becoming that leader that you think you might be able to be if this voice wasn't in you. Okay. Take a minute to think about it. It might be negative self-talk. It might be poor body image. It might be fear of failure. Um, it might be anxiety. Is your anxiety completely hindered you from going anywhere? So think about what's the thing. What is the mind block? Okay. Are you always stressed? And so your stress is deciding things for you. Does everybody have what they think a mind block could be that's getting in their way? Does anybody want to problem solve their mind block with me right here, right now? Right? <laughs> Well, if you need help getting to it, I'm happy to, to give you that coaching in a moment. If you need help getting to it, you know there's something that's getting in your way, but you don't know what it is, come see me as a mixer and, and I'll ask you some questions that might get there. But I know some basic ones that get in a lot of us, uh, a lot of our ways as professionals, fear, doubt, stress, overwhelm, 
not feeling good enough. We call these things gremlins in the coaching world, right? So identify your gremlins, write it down. Anybody want to share their gremlin? Yes! Brave soul! All right, what is it? I think I feel inadequate because I have an MBA, but I'm a long time off for kids. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know what I want anymore because of all of that. <laughs> we can write a five for example, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be now. We don't want to speak that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I don't know who I want to be. Mm -hmm. Are you questioning, like, what is the relevance of my work experience now, or what are the opportunities going to be now that I've been doing some other things? Yes. Or that you don't know what you want anymore? Because those are two different things. I think it's like I don't really know what I want, but the whole you know, last 18 years has been so much cool to me. Oh, okay. So now, what do you think is in the way of you finding? So sometimes when we become moms and dads, it's really hard for us to make up the priority. We feel like guilty. I'm going to go to Starbucks and map out my life vision while my baby is screaming. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like it's like you know, things just change. Let's just say that, right? So you haven't made it your priority. So what is what do you tell yourself about that? That because you haven't made it your priority, what? You don't know what you want. And therefore, okay, all right. So that's, that's not a helpful thought, right? <laughs> no, okay. So I'm not going to get where I want to go because I don't know what I want, all right? So I'm going to, oh, sorry guys, I'm just clicking things away over here, getting excited. So this is the process that I'm going to teach you guys, and we're going to use your example if that's okay to work through the process, okay? So ACT. ACT is a type of mindfulness-based therapy that I use with my clients. Um, I work mostly with professional women, female entrepreneurs, and business owners. And I just think this mindfulness approach to awareness is what creates real meaningful change in the leader's life. So, the first step to doing anything about anything is awareness, okay? And it's not as easy as it sounds, because it means we have to take a hard look at ourselves and start to pay attention to the things we do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is notice when you're having that thought, all right? So let's say you're applying for a promotion and the thought comes in, well, you don't know what you want, so you're not going to I want you to say out loud, you don't know what you want, so you're not going to get it. And sometimes just that, you realize how silly it is in the moment, and you go, well, wait a minute, and you start standing up for yourself. So name it. Call it out. Oh, there's my fear. My fear is showing up by telling me I'm going to fail today at this talk. Or that's my anxiety, right, showing up as a stomach ache. There it is. Just name it. Call it out. Externalize it. Okay, the next thing that I want you to do is take a breath. So just a simple inhale and exhale calms the central nervous system down. And guys, we make better decisions when our nervous system is more grounded. Because I want you to ramp up for step three, which is I want you to start challenging that voice that tells you you can't. I want you to start asking it some critical questions like, well, what evidence do I have? that I can't versus what evidence do I have that I can't? What evidence do I have? Like, how would I, why would I know that because I don't know exactly what I want, I won't have a fruitful career going forward? And you can even write it out. You can even take out a sheet of paper, fold it lengthwise, and write out reasons, evidence that supports I can't and evidence that supports me, the I can. And what you'll see is that there's not a lot of real raw evidence over here. It's the stories we're making up in our minds that keep us stuck. So you have to start showing up for yourself and challenging that voice and saying, no, 
actually, I don't have any evidence that supports that. Now you're going to take another breath because things are getting serious on the inside with this battle that's happening. And this is work. And then you're going to take a conscious, actionable step that is in alignment with who you really are, not what this thought is, with what you really want, and like what your values are and what the life is that you set for yourself. Okay. So you have the thought that because you don't know what you want to do, you're not going to get anywhere that you want to go. You name it, you take a breath, you challenge it. Challenge it. If you write it out, guys, there's a, there's a real reason that that helps. So when we worry about things, but that worry hangs out in the limbic system in our brain, which is why it feels so yucky. But when you write things down, the kinesthetic transfer moves that information to your frontal lobe. And you can see it differently, and you can like use your critical thinking skills, your executive functioning part of your brain to see, well, wait a minute here. I don't have any evidence that says I'm going to fail or not win or not get where I want to go. And then you breathe. And then, I mean, this is like the most important thing besides awareness is you have to do something different than you did before. If you just keep doing what you've been doing and you're not getting where you want to go, Whose responsibility is it, right? So it might be uncomfortable for you to go to a networking event, but if you know what you want to do is connect and grow, you got to work through that and show up and connect. Okay? The only way that these things get easier is by repetition and doing. Anybody else have one that they want to work through? You guys following? Yeah? Okay. Any questions up to this point? Okay, so just a couple side notes with the mindset, some other things that I have seen help people. So number one, gratitude is what creates more of what you want. So if you want connection, go out and connect. If you want money, give money. If you want love, show love. If you want um, great friends, be a great friend. Be thankful for what you have, and you will see more of it show up in your life. I promise you that. Okay? I just went and saw Tony Robbins talk uh, last week, and that was such a huge part of his message. And I thought, yes, Tony Robbins is saying what I'm saying. That means there must be some of this there, right? He said 90% we should be focusing on solutions, being grateful for what we already have and what we can control. But realistically, how much time are you spending on those things versus what's out of your control? And entertaining, you know, the worst case scenario. So people that win are willing to take a deep look at themselves to see what's getting in their way and do something different. All right? Another thing that helps is just moving your body. So the more you move, the more you feel, and the more you're going to take action. So. If you've had a rough day, but you know you've got to end strong for whatever reason, go outside, take a walk, do some jumping jacks. Literally move your body. Okay? We know that there is a correlation between psychology and physiology when it comes to success and achievement. Move your body. If you're kind of bored right now, stand up and sit back down. You're going to feel different. You're going to feel better. Okay? That's why I high five you. Hopefully that gave you a little boosty. <laughs> um, last thing, guys, is that language impacts our biochemistry. So be careful with the things you say to yourself, but also be careful about the words that you choose to use with others. Whether it's your friends, family, um, your customers, your bosses, be mindful about the language that you choose because when we choose language that is sharp or demeaning, it really doesn't promote anybody to want to do the right thing. So I'll give you an example. How does it feel when somebody says to you, you've mistaken? You may have mistaken. <laughs> You're not totally great because I'm kind of a perfectionist, but not horrible, right? What about your wrong? Oh, yeah, you're like, <laughs> right. what about your line? 
How does that one feel? Yeah. So how you talk to yourself, how you talk to, to others has a big impact on how you feel, which will either help you move forward or hinder your ability to move forward. Okay. Okay, so whose responsibility is it for you guys to grow and develop? Whose responsibility is it? Yeah. No, no victims in here, right? See, but there's a reason I'm saying this. Because people wait for people to see the best in them, and it does feel really good when people see the greatness in you. But if you wait for that and you don't take initiative and you don't go after what you want, bummer for you. Okay? So Number one, be your own best advocate. If you have an idea of what you want, or even if you don't, get out and talk to people. Talk about what you do great, your superpowers, right? Figure out what opportunities are out there. Sell yourself on why you'd be great for that promotion. But, like, it's not just going to be handed to us all the time. You've got to go out and get it, right? And just like I talked about managing the mindset and how critical that is, a lot of pushback that I get from folks who I don't have time. And that feels like an excuse to me. So we've got to manage our mind, but we've also got to manage our time. So if you want to develop and you want to grow, if I were to look at how you spent your week and month, would I be able to tell based on the things you are doing that that's your priority? Okay. So if you want to grow, then you got to look at your time and go, okay, so when am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? And when can I connect with this person? And when can I study this? And when can I prepare? For like, it, it, it takes time. But you guys are in charge of your time. Is it a little bit of extra work sometimes to get to the next level? Yeah. Right? There's like no way of getting around that. You do kind of like a full-time job and you got a little part-time situation where you're growing. <laughs> I've done that my whole life. I get it. But I get where I want to go because I invest my time in it. If you look at my calendar, you will see what my three priorities are to grow in my business. Because it's all on there. That's what I do. You have to be protective of your time and energy, too. So a lot of times we say yes to a lot of things, and we got to get better at protecting our time. It's like, if this is my goal, if I want to promote, if I want to grow, if I want to do more, then sometimes you have to not do these other things that are taking your time and energy and focus on that. When we focus on too many things, we don't get real momentum. So is it your priority, and what's your time management around it? How do you know if you've spent your time wisely? It's kind of like when I go to a networking event and I come back with like two business cards and I know that this wasn't a meaningful conversation because I was feeling whatever that moment. Like, I checked myself on that. Like, you didn't maximize the opportunity there. So how do you guys hold yourself accountable to looking for the opportunities both inside the four walls of where you work and outside, okay? Because they're there if you look and you take advantage of them. We talked about this. So if it's uncomfortable, it's working, right? Um, think about when you're prioritizing your development, like what's the hardest part about it for you? Is it believing in yourself? Is it asking for things? Is it networking? Is it interviewing well? What is it that you struggle with, and or what is it that you struggle with just in your business practices? It's your least favorite thing to do. That's important, right? It's got to be important. Bite that off when you have your best energy. So when you talk about productivity, you probably have noticed maybe you're more productive first thing in the morning. Maybe you kind of strike genius in the evening. If you're a creative person, that's normal for them. Whatever that is, but buy off the thing that's the hardest for you when you've got that energy. So for me, the sales part of my business, the like calling folks and getting in front of them and pitching my services and 
all that contracting, that's like my least favorite part. I love coaching and counseling and consulting. That's easy for me. But the going and getting the work and making sure work is coming in and that like I'm growing and I'm meeting my financial goals and asking for business, ooh, that's kind of scary. Kind of yucky. Like you get rejected a lot. You question yourself. So I do that in the morning when I have my best energy, right? Get up, have my coffee, put my gangster wrap on, and I make my phone call. <laughs> and then I know, like, oh, I'm done with that. I got the whole day to get other things done. So bite off the hardest part when you have your best energy. <laughs> Be a mentor and receive mentoring. So, you guys, it's not all about us. You could potentially be having an impact on somebody right now, but you have no idea you have an impact. It could be your team member. It could, what do you guys call them? Sorry, it's probably not a partner. Partner! partner. partner. Hi. Much more lovely than team member. It could be, you know, that customer that comes in every morning for the same type of coffee. It could be your boss. You don't know who you're impacting. And I really believe if we show up and serve and give and share and help and support, we become a magnet for, like, opportunities and success. So it isn't just about, like, what can I get? It's also, what am I giving? So I've had, like, a coffee meeting or whatever business development stuff many times in my career where I was like, I'm so tired. I just I don't want to do this. Those meetings always end up being the most valuable. It's like a magical connection happens, and we're going to do business together, and let's go change the world, and now we're best friends, and real things happen. Because you show up anyway. And when I show up in those settings, I don't show up for me because I know I don't want to in that moment. I show up for the person that I committed to that I would be. And by showing up and serving and giving, I end up walking away just jazzed with opportunity. So it isn't just about us, okay? You're probably making an impact on somebody you don't even know right now. From a sister. Any questions, comments? Okay. Okay, so who is more willing to show up if they've committed to someone else? Raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's true, like, I still like candy so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the 50-50 chance, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so you guys, there's, there's some real stuff behind that. There's a reason to have an accountability partner. There's a reason to check in with somebody. There's a reason you guys have these phenomenal tools at Starbucks, okay? Like, I took it, I didn't take advantage of those tools as much as I should have, and then I got into the real world, and I was like, Oh, like, where do you document your development? If you don't have a, you guys call it a partner development plan. Like, I had to chicken scratch that out and design my own form. You guys have tools that help you with this stuff. But who are you, like, reaching out to once a week, maybe bi-weekly, maybe once a month, and saying, all right, so last time you said you were going to do this, how did it go? And I said I was going to do this, and this is what I did. I crushed this, and I struggled with that. Find that person in your life that you can hold accountable and they can hold you accountable. You will make steady progress when you're checking in with somebody else. Okay? So you can do the weekly calls. I have people that get groups of people together and they create a Google Doc. The like Google Docs are not my thing. But they have Google Docs and like every week everyone's supposed to post like what they did and then they cheer each other on and it's a cool rah-rah moment. Phone reminders, so um, I have two phone reminders that go off every day. One is to check in on my stress. It goes off, I stop what I'm doing, I breathe, and I say, okay, I broke up a scale of one to 10, like how worked up are you? Because I get worked up. <laughs> like, I have just as much anxiety as you guys do. And sometimes it's good and I just keep maintaining and sometimes I can feel it and it's, it's getting there and so I'll take care of myself and go take a walk or whatever. Then I have a second one that shows up later in the day, usually about the time that I want to check out for the day. 
that it's like, are you living your best life? Are you? And I'm like, oh, not really sitting on the couch watching Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> not really getting anywhere by doing this. It, it works. It's the psychology of things. It works, okay? Um, I told you guys a little bit about the evolution of the brain and how the brain has evolved to see the negative. Why we can see where we could be better so much easier than seeing our superpowers. We can rewire our brains, though, folks. You know this, right? You've heard of this concept, maybe, neuroplasticity. So if every single day on your way home from work, you name three things that went well that day. Or if every single day for 90 days, you stop for a minute and notice everything that's going good in the world around you. So what's pretty, what's happening, what you're grateful for. In 90 days of doing that simple exercise, you will have created thousands of new neural pathways that start to look for the good in things naturally. You guys, it works because I tested. I was like, there's no way. Like, there's no way I'm just going to be seeing the good in everything all the time. Then I surprised myself. I was driving in the car and I was like, oh, look at how pretty the trees look. And that guy, look, he's so happy running. I would have made fun of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, cool, you're running. <laughs> That's me projecting. <laughs> but it, it sounds corny, you guys, but it's real. So make sure, and you guys have probably heard this with your team, too. Like, this is why we recognize things. Because it feels good and it's important that we focus on the good because when we focus on the good, we tend to create more. All right, so start with a small commitment around that. It's just three things on the way home from work. Or it's three things in the, in the shower in the morning of what you're grateful for. Or here's another challenge I can give you. For 90 days, every day in the shower or every day on the way to work, Say you're grateful for something that you want more of in your life, whether it's money, love, friendship, travel, I don't care what it is. Every day for 90 days, say you're grateful for it, mean it, believe it, imagine it, and see what happens. You will see it show up. It's pretty cool. Some of it is, it just shows up. Some of it is, you're changing your mindset and you're noticing when things are showing up. Right. And all of this is important because you can, there might be an opportunity for you to grow. There might be a developmental opportunity that's right here in front of you right now, but because you're so busy doubting yourself and seeing the bad in the world, you can't even see it because your channels are turned off. So this is about opening them up so you can say, wow, I had this conversation and I think something really cool could happen in this relationship. So, you know, I'm going to follow back up because I see an opportunity here. Those are the folks that get where they want to go. Uh, so take a minute to write out who your accountability uh, partner could be. If you don't already have one, who could this person be? All right, guys. Um, so networking. Whoops, be day. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, <laughs> this is really challenging to press the clicker. You want it quicker? I delivered. I get really excited about the clicker. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So who's in your network? So it's all about creating connections, both inside of your job and outside of your job. You never know. If that next customer is going to be your boss someday, or you're going to be their boss someday. I had no idea Vanessa was going to reach out to me 15 years later and provide me this amazing opportunity to come talk to you. For now, I get to see all the great things that she's done since we worked together. Like, that took 15 years to come back around, but it did. And that kind of stuff happens every day. It might be your neighbor. It might be someone you go to church with or do yoga with or play basketball with. It might be your son's teacher. But like if you show up with an open heart and you're very proud of who you are and where you're going, you'll see that those connections lead to things that apply to your situation right now. 
and it's not now Linda. The power of authentic connection and how to authentically connect. So you guys, have you ever felt when you're at like a networking event and you can feel when someone's just going through the motions? You guys probably get that a lot. <laughs> you guys probably get that a lot, right? You just feel it and you're like, oh, cool, like cool handshake and this is awkward, like let's just stop pretending and go to the bar right now, right? So, but when you show up and you're meeting somebody for the first time and you have a sincere curiosity about them, like I want to know your story. I want to know who you are, where you're from, your situation, like what have you overcome in your life, because that tells me your character. Yeah, I want to know how I can help you. That's how I approach networking. Like, who are you and how can I help you? And sometimes we we'll forward and people are like, well, this is crazy. Those may be not my people, that's okay. But like, come from a place of actually being curious about this person and how you can help them. So what's their why? Like how cool is it to loop back around to somebody and follow up with something that was in their why category? That feels really good when that happens to me. Like if somebody talks about the opportunities that I want to provide my kids or the work I do around empowering women, it feels like I was heard and understood. And guess what? As human beings, we all just want to be heard and understood. That is like the core thing that unites us. So if you want to connect with people, show up to serve, find out their lives, um, give. Give up yourself. Open up. Because you never know who you're going to cross paths with again. So I want you to take some time to think about, like, who in your life, whether they're with Starbucks or not, did you connect with pretty organically? And you thought maybe more could happen there, but you got busy or whatever. And you know it's time to maybe reach back out. Or maybe it's somebody that you haven't met yet, but you've been meaning to. Or maybe it's somebody that you really look up to and you want to pick their brain on their why and how they make things happen. Take a minute to think about who am I going to reach out to for my development when I leave this? And write it down on your sheet. I really wanted to meet Tony Robbins the other day, but that didn't, didn't happen. Next time. Next time. Okay. So just a couple quick notes on how to stay inspired. So the most successful people I know work really hard to remain ambitious and inspired and that doesn't just come naturally. I know sometimes there's this perception of like, oh, you're just motivated. You just love life that much. No, like mm -hmm. everybody struggles sometimes. And so we have to strategically remain inspired. And so a couple of things that I like to share with folks that I've done a lot of research on to help people remain inspired is to get out and play. Okay? Here's why. And so play isn't like I ask people, like, what do you do for just sheer enjoyment? Well, I, I run, you know, and I'm like, no, you do that for, like, serve a purpose, okay? Um, or I, like, I, like, binge clean my closet, right? Like, you, you do that to serve a purpose. But, like, what's the thing that you used to do when you were little that was so freeing, you felt like yourself, it was so fun? <laughs> Get out and do that, because here's why. And if you guys want to Google this to check me out, go ahead, or to check my stats, go ahead. So have you ever seen a really busy um, brain wavelength? Have you ever seen that? Okay. So it looks basically like this. I can't show it. It looks like this. Okay. This is a stress brain wave. This is an anxious brain wave. This is a, I'm not good enough, I'm busy, all that jazz brain wave. And there's no room in there. There's no room. And in order to connect to creativity, in order to connect to your best ideas, in order to connect to solutions, 
in order to see opportunities, we have to slow that brain wave down. And so if you compare that to say a, um, a brain wave in a meditative state, it looks like this, like a long rolling hill. Okay. <coughs> so there's all this room for you to access it. And what we know is that when you're playing, when you're in a true state of joy, that is when you are going to connect to what's next for you. Or the solution to this complex problem you have with your team member, or how you're gonna get where you wanna go, okay? So get out and do the things that you like to do that connect you to who you are, and suddenly information will start making its way to you that will guide you to where you're going. Um, also, you know, getting out in nature is really good, listening to music. So anything that's going to affect your energetic vibration is going to help you. So music does that, nature does that, playing does that, meditation does that. Um, I like dancing, okay? So there's all these things that you can do. Um, make sure that you guys are following people that you aspire to be. This is another way to stay inspired. So. Like when I get in a rut or stuck, I go back to all the people that I've been following and look at what they're doing. And you see that they're doing cool stuff, right? They're moving and shaking. They're making a difference in the world. And I see like how they're doing it. And I study how they're doing it. And then I integrate some of that that fits me and my style into what I do. So who motivates you? Who do you look up to? Who is kicking butt and taking names? And are you following them on social media? which is the easiest tool to use to be successful, by the way. You can watch people doing it every day for free. <laughs> so think about some things that you can do. When we talk about creating a routine for development, that self-care piece that I'm talking about right now, that quieting of the mind, whether it be through play or meditation, that should be a priority in your weekly workload for you to be able to have what you need, tools on the inside to get where you need help. So write out a thing that you can do. <clears throat> Anybody want to share the thing that they love to do for play? No? You guys not play? Go ahead. Um, so I'm a very creative person. Yeah. And so doing the Islamic Studies is very frustrating and like that really. That it kind of like just makes your brain stop mm -hmm. for a while, mm -hmm. and that is really when I get to be my best ideas. Yes. So, awesome. I've a lot of time for that recently, it's just the way it works, it's life. Yeah. Um, but last weekend, I just got a chance to to do it, and so many ideas of how to put myself there, how to help others, mm -hmm. it's so important. That's a beautiful example. It's like your channels have been turned off. You turn them on, and all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, well, I don't even know how to do all of these ideas. <laughs> Sure. Hands down, I cannot access my best business strategies without meditation. It is the tool I use for everything. I, I don't know how I did anything before, but whenever I'm stuck, that's, I get my ideas. Exactly. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So I want this part's really important to me. So we've talked about a lot of different things today. All right. We've talked about what you want and getting some clarity around where you want to go. We've talked about your why and using that as an anchor for motivation to keep doing what you've got to do to get there. We've talked about your mindset. That's probably the biggest piece in identifying what's getting in your way so you can use some tools to not let it hinder you anymore. We've talked about connections with people. We've talked about managing your time. We've talked about staying inspired. We've talked about owning your development. That's a lot in 45 minutes, so I'm sorry if you're just like, oh, whoa. But what's resonating with you? Is there one thing that's like, oh, I should probably do that? Yeah. I should probably do that. Write it down. And then take a few minutes to actually map out, like, what you're going to do about that that's different. What will that actually look like? Tomorrow when you show up, well, tomorrow when you wake up, first of all. So how you start your day sets your tone for the day. So if you're starting your day in your bed looking at your email, you're starting with a low vibe. 
Just saying. You're starting to get soft. Okay, we okay. have a long day. Now, this is a hard habit to break. I know sometimes I still do it. But, like, start your day tomorrow with this maybe vision of what you want for yourself or statements that support you in getting there or dreaming a little, daydreaming in bed. But what are you going to do different tomorrow? Write that down. And who are you going to tell about what you did different tomorrow? That accountability partner we talked about? You guys, you're 90% more likely to follow through if you pick a person and you know you have to let them know what you did different tomorrow. So if one of you does that, one of you will move the needle tomorrow. If you all do that, you all will move the needle. So pick a person and be accountable. You can pick me. You can email me. I will respond. Not first thing in the morning, but I will. <laughs> it's a really sensitive subject right now. It's a sensitive subject. It's got a nine month old. And she's not a good sleeper. And I've got a 15 year old who wants to sleep all day. So managing the two, I never know what time it's going to be, but it's usually pretty early. <laughs> You know they wake up at like 3 a.m. to open stores, right? Yeah, that's really <laughs> <laughs> That's like, who knows? You know? <laughs> One of the speakers at this conference I went to last week on achievement and success said, like, one of the tenets of his success is he woke up at 5.30 every day no matter what and did the things that no one else wanted to do before everyone else was up. So you want to sleep, you want to get up. No judgment, but like, where are you going? <laughs> Anybody have any, like, I know what I, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how, I don't know what this could look like that would be different in my day-to-day -day life. You guys all have amazing plans. You look familiar to me. Do I look familiar to you? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> not to put you on the spot. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I came across you a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I really like what I had to see back then. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So, did everybody get a moment to write that takeaway down? Yeah? Do we need, does anybody need another moment? So I want to hear from a couple people. What is one thing you're going to do different going forward so you can dig deep to grow? Anybody, just blurt it out. Be bold. Yes. <laughs> that was bold. Yeah. 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 I love that. Didn't your energy just shift? Like, yeah, that was not a high five. Though. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Blurt it out. Come on. I'm going to be kind to myself. I like that. I say a lot of mean things. <laughs> Things will change big time in your life when you can just adjust that even a little bit. It's huge. And watch the transformations happen every day. What else? I'm going to ask myself if I'm living my best life around 4.30 p.m. when I decide what I'm going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I will not put you on the spot. Any questions for me? Comments? Oh my gosh, I am three minutes early. I am so <laughs> Any questions, comments, anything at all? Yeah. Thank you. What's one thing that you can like? Where do you, what was the thing that resonated with you? Uh, just like look, looking closer at things and kind of like what you said before. Like it's like I want to do this, and then you know asking questions. Mm -hmm. So seeing the opportunity and taking action. Love it. Love it. I, there was another one up here I thought. Yeah. Oh, through your presentation, and it was great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just noticed that somebody has made me their accountability partner. Oh. And I didn't know what it was, but she's like, oh, can I call you every Sunday and, <laughs> and see where you're at with this, and I'll tell you. And I was like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> You got hand selected. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So have you been have you two been following through on that at all? Yes, it was about meditation actually. Cool. I started and I was trying to tell her what my journey had been with meditation and mm -hmm. so she wanted to catch up with me every Sunday and see if I was still meditating <coughs> and she would tell me. Uh -huh. But I didn't so know cool. what that was about, but now I understand. <laughs> That's so cool. See, you never know when you're making an impact on someone else. Anything else? Yeah. What is your actual business? What do you do? Yeah. So my business is called Brook Jean Counseling and Coaching, and there's three parts to my business. So I do good old-fashioned counseling where I help folks through love, life, and career transition. And then I do life and leadership coaching where I work primarily with women in business and female entrepreneurs. And then I work with businesses kind of as a coach and consultant doing a lot of different things, mostly leadership coaching and well-being um, culture implementation. So I bring a lot of my neuroscience and my psychology um, to help um, business executives in kind of a small to medium sized business. Is that what your MBA was? No. Oh, yeah. So I got my master's in counseling psychology. Yeah. So I left. I was with Target for 10 years. I was running the Aurora Super Target when the Aurora Theater shooting happened. And we lost a team member. My entire early morning logistics team was in that theater that night. And it was like the most devastating 72 hours of my life. But it that experience because my eyes were open was when it became so clear what my real calling was. And I had loved my corporate career at Target. I, I couldn't believe the leadership experience that I got running stores at such a young age, but I did what I needed to do because I was a young mom and I had gotten to a place where I could do what I wanted to do. And so I left my job that was my only identity and my financial security to go chase my purpose and passion and go back to school and launch a business. And everybody said, don't launch a business right after grad school. You can't launch a business. I launched it two days later and it's been amazing for the last three years. So it's pretty cool. That finding Joe, follow your bliss, that thing, that movie is amazing. Yeah. And I'm currently scaling my business on the consulting side. So there's a lot of opportunity in Denver right now. So I'm growing. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Um, what do you think we like women should do to really band together and support each other going forward? Like, do you see a common thread that's like, mm -hmm. yeah, stop comparing ourselves to each other. <laughs> so delete my social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean. Truly, it's like, if you can see, I think we have to pay attention to what women are doing and applaud them and support them and, and cheer them on versus saying, I wish I could do that, so I'm going to project my insecurity and judge that. 
So I think we have to, and by the way, I don't think it's all our fault. I think culture does a big part of that when we are we compare. But I think that that is a waste of energy. I think when we come together and we put that aside and we say, what do you know? What do you know? How can I help you? How can I help you? I work mostly with women and I see cool things happening every day. So lifting each other up versus comparing. And talking about things that we're talking about today. So a lot of trainings, a lot of developmental discussions are, in my opinion, still kind of old school. And like, I want to talk about what's real. Like the fact that I have anxiety, that affects me. The fact that I'm a working mom, that affects me. Um, the fact that, you know, I have these things in my past, that affects me. And I'm ready to talk about it so we can work through it, so we can move forward and I don't want to just talk about how to be successful in the old way. I want to talk about like what's relevant now. Things have changed, but that's exciting. Anything else? Thank you guys so much for your attention. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, I love it. Very cool. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Now we'd like to invite the panelists up front. You guys will move your chairs yep. and we'll help you if you need help. So while the panelists are moving, if everyone can just kind of stand up. Yeah, let's do a stretch. Oh, yeah. Cool. Move your body. Yeah. 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 Hi, 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 yeah. I'm actually sort of a favorite thing I like to play. 
So I like to ski. Yeah. Keep your mind off everything. You give me a pair of sticks and two feet of powder, and I'm in heaven. Um, but I'm a seven-year partner. I started out as a barista for two weeks. I was horrible at it. I was horrible at it. I was a shift supervisor for another two weeks, a little bit better. Uh, then I was a store manager for three years, a district manager for three years. I'm your current rock. I'm your regional operations coach. And just over a year in role for that. And the coolest title of all of Starbucks. <laughs> So yeah, we'd like to open up any questions you guys have, whether it's about the development process at Starbucks, what these great fearless leaders have done in their own development, or uh, ask them questions about what resonated with them with what works for them today. So. Okay, so I think um, as I've gone through my career journey, now that I've changed that out of one of the things I get asked a lot that I think some of you guys who have moved or like they wait for that job to happen right in front of them, they, they get scared about the relocation or how big Starbucks is. So I think there's a couple of you guys on the panel that have been brave enough to try and relocate to Starbucks for that goal and put yourself out there. And I think that's something that maybe people for those who want to grow and develop, but maybe they're not sure where or they're not moving on because they're scared to try. I transferred. I think you moved for a role. Oh, you said R. That's a lot. <laughs> 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 you know, All right. Mark, um, can you kind of repeat what you're going to answer for that? Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So Rochelle asked the question. Um, Oftentimes, people at Starbucks or in a lot of organizations will look that kind of lateral, direct target, especially in a in a tight geographical area, to be able to promote within that market. And kind of the mindset and or why and what opens up those challenges to relocate or to consider a different market. I can tell you, for me, I started in the Texas market as a store manager and. Uh, my mother-in-law reminds me often, I said, I've never planned on leaving East Texas where I got married. I'm reminded of that often, but I, at the time, I, uh, I really hadn't ever planned on leaving East Texas. You know, everything seemed like it was there and it wanted to be there. And what happened for me was uh, we were young in our relationship, my wife and I. We were struggling because of, I would say, the family was too into our family. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was creating an impact on my overall family, one. And then two, I felt like I had really a pretty strong prowess of understanding how to be successful in the Texas market. Uh, I really wanted to challenge myself, grow, and excel in an opportunity to see, you know, really what was possible in my career. So I spent time talking with my wife of where things, you know, we could go, what we could do, what we would want to see, what we would want our, at the time, our uh, five-year-old and our one-year-old to do. There was a lot of fear around it. You know, you've got a family unit that's supporting, the fact that you got two kids, we were both working, there was nobody just to, you know, if you go somewhere, who's going to take care of your children? Of course, every time you get ready to move, there's all the horror stories of something that happened to a kid that was in some place or something. So there's just all of that anxiety. But ultimately, um, I knew we had to take a chance for the betterment of our family. I knew we had to take a chance for the betterment of our development. So I spent time really working with uh, my wife and myself to, to realize where did we want to be, what did we want to do, and what skin in the game were we willing to put in to make that happen. So that's what took us to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which we never lived outside of the U.S. So I thought, what a crazy opportunity to work in an international market. And what, there's not a safer market in my perspective to go to. <laughs> it's as close to the U.S. as you can get, um, especially if you've ever been to parts of Canada. Edmonton is as close to the U.S. as you can get to, or all of Alberta, that province. Uh, but it was such a great development for me. And I, I asked a lot of questions going in, like, what do you think I'll get out of this? What do you believe I'll be able to provide? What do you see as the mutual benefit to the two of us? And um, the the real gift though was from a personal perspective, I loved my uh, extended family, my mom, my dad, my brother, her family. I got along with them. Um, <laughs> but ultimately we really became closer than I could have ever imagined just by being in a completely different country, 
being able to rely on one another, seeing what we can do. And now my children, uh, I believe, are highly effective at building relationships quickly because they've had to be. We've moved them several times at several stages in their life, and I get asked all the time, wow, that's got to be hard on them. And I ask them. And every time, my oldest son's usually the one who talks, um, and he'll always say the same thing. I look forward to see where we're going next. Like, he's actually the one now. Like, I'm interested to see what's next, what else is out there. Where else can I learn and grow? But I do think a lot of people live in the past, and the technological world has changed moving. Because now I still see my son connected with people from Canada, from Cleveland, from Texas, on his phone, on Instagram. They're doing this, they're doing that. And it, just, it doesn't feel like it did in the past where you left and you left everybody behind. So I think uh, keep in mind what either your parents or other people who may have influence on your life tell you about moving may not necessarily be accurate or relevant any longer. And for me, it's been a true gift. Did that answer your question? So Brooke talks a lot about making sure that you make time for your development. Uh, how did how have you guys balanced over the years getting numbers, meeting metrics, living your own personal lives, and then making that time for yourself? Uh, I can start. I think first and foremost for me, the thing I have to stay true to, um, even before Starbucks, was work-life balance. Uh, my family is the most important thing that I have, uh, and I will never sacrifice them for a career. So I have always kind of devoted, first off, uh, work-life balance. And that doesn't mean hours worked. It means effectiveness of the time that I'm home. So it doesn't really matter if I work 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week. It's the time spent with my family when I'm there and what we're actually doing. So it has to be devoted time. And then I think um, the question about development, Brooke mentioned it's in my calendar. Uh, so there is development time blocked, uh, whether it's to sit and read a book, uh, a lot of us, I'm, I have you know three kids at home too. You don't always get to sit and read a book. You don't usually get to go to the bathroom by yourself. Um, and so I think you know just blocking time and then not letting it get moved for other things. So you have to really kind of protect it. I would definitely second what Kelly uh, is speaking of. I also have three young children, um, and I prioritize that time with them a ton. I don't want to miss a thing with them. Um, but I've also recently signed up for ASU, um, and that is a tough battle at home to prioritize that time um, to study and get back into the swing of things and focus on my development. And one of the things that I took away from Brooke, Brooke Jean's presentation was my motivation and my why um, is to show up every single day as a strong role model for my daughters. Uh, to show them what is possible and what they can do, and finishing my education is extremely important to me, and I want to show them that. So, well, next, uh, I got a little bit from taking work-life balance. Um, my philosophy just have life, so work's part of that, and if work stinks, just do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've always uh, reached out in uh, the parts of the job that really fulfill me is where I lean into when I'm at, when I'm struggling. So to me, it's like I really enjoy people. Uh, so sometimes I'm in the corporate office, sometimes more than I like to be. If I'm ever struggling, I literally will just walk into the store and talk to a partner. And it literally just makes my day every time. Um, and then in terms of my development, uh, I think it's important to lean into things that you enjoy about your development. So for me, in the role I'm in right now, I'm incredibly lucky. I get to spend uh, a ton of time with our five regional directors, our regional vice president, and our two licensed DM. Kelly is actually one of my mentors. Uh, but I literally have eight mentors that I get to spend all the time with, and I love that time. I'm a sponge, and I just absorb it. So I think take advantage of your job and what you're doing and what you like out of it. And there's moments in time, uh, like Kelly and Sarah, I definitely block out time for development. But in your role, there's a ton of development that you can take if you just look for it and open up to it. Uh, and I'm really fortunate in the role I'm in right now because about half my uh, my work right now is development. a practical question. This is a barista that I, I think that I have an MBA. Like, how do I look for other jobs to start with? Like, everything I see seems to be in Seattle. I can't get to move to Seattle. So how can I find things in Starbucks that I can help with or do? Uh, I would ch 
challenge first to talk to your store manager, talk to your DM, find out what's out there. We have a newsletter that comes out from here right now with different job opportunities. Uh, don't be afraid to call and email somebody. I have, uh, in my seven years in Starbucks, I'm very curious. I have yet to email or call somebody who hasn't got back to me, just been engaged in a conversation with me to sit down. So I think, you, I mean, I don't know what your MBA is in, but if you want to talk to somebody, just literally start somewhere. And um, kind of what Brooke was saying about your network, somebody else knows somebody else. And Starbucks, uh, for a company of 300,000 300, people, it is an incredibly small world. Uh, incredibly small. Uh, I see people in New York like, what the heck? We started together seven years ago. Uh, and you'll be able to find those networks and connections. And to Mark's point, uh, some of it might involve moving, but more and more in this world, we have, we have jobs that you can be based out of your uh, out of your house or the regional office here. How have you been introduced to the great That was just part of the SM training. And I, <laughs> that was, uh, it took me eight months to learn to make a drink. That was the worst thing. But now I can make the best flat white ever. So, <laughs> I will challenge anybody here to flat white. <laughs> I would also just add Starbucks.com backslash careers has a ton of information. Uh, go in there and figure out what jobs are available, and then to Dave's point, just ask somebody, and they'll help connect you to who that person is currently and help teach you about that role. Another question. Um, I'm a barista at Johnstown, and uh, I was just wondering, how do you shut down uh, negativity at the workplace. So we're all connected with our headsets. And every once in a while, I guess, as the job stress takes a toll, somebody will say something negative, just, you know, not directed at anybody specifically, just negative in general. So how would you, uh, if you've ever encountered that at your own workplace, how would you lighten the mood, bring people up? Um, I would say it's a choice every day and every moment, um, <laughs> whether you are coming across as positive or negative, um, but it always takes that one person or that champion uh, to bring the team up. You've worked with people who are just magnetic or they bring up the atmosphere and it's because they're choosing to do that and to look uh, at the world through a positive perspective. And if you're working with someone who struggles to do that, I would honestly just have a genuine conversation with them and bring it to their attention. If they're not aware, then make them aware. Um, but ask them how you can support them. I literally just called Sarah and see a sarcastic comment. I think it's my I know, but I would, I would follow up with one thing Brooke talked about is uh, how are you solution oriented? It is the easiest thing in the world to see problems. We can all like, identify problems. It doesn't take anyone immense brain power to, to, to identify a problem. The solution to me, are you curious? Do you have something fun? And, and, and kind of what Sarah said, if somebody's negative, that they're, they're just pointing out problems. How do you become solution-oriented? Our job is to make coffee and connect with people. That's it. It should be a fun job. So if they're not doing that, I would call them out. I would make the work environment. You own your own environment, so how do you make it fun? Be curious, and um, my advice would be be really curious about them. Similar to what whenever Brooke was saying, you can say something in different ways and it can impact somebody very differently. So instead of um, what you said was negative, just ask the question. You could even start with, hey, I care about you as a person and I want to make sure you understand how that showed up. And is that what you want to show up as? And then just, you know, same thing in return. If you be an accountability partner with them, if you see me show up in that way, you know I want to be great at what I do, can you call me out too? I think whenever there's that two-way dialogue, people are more open to really hear what you have to say versus feeling as though you're just able to point out the problem. I think just to follow, Brooke also talked about it, like getting to know people. Like our jobs, you should get to know them. Do you just put your apron on and go start to work? Or is it like, hey, Sarah, how are your kids doing? Tell me how many sporting events you had to go to this weekend. Uh, Mark, Cleveland, Cleveland just blew it. This, you know, they did that tonight. They're awful. Where you want to, like, you know the people you want as well, though. <laughs> but you can turn somebody around if you know them well enough and what you're talking about. And it should be fun. So. Uh, I was going to ask, Brooke pointed out, like, you have your whole team of people that you have to Where has that been most of you guys? And how did you get past it? 
I'll share a recent example for myself. So I've been in this role, like I said, for about five years. And uh, I think like everybody in this room, we're here because we want to continue to move forward and grow and develop. And so my next uh, couple of roles I had that I've been thinking about, I was uh, sharing with my boss. The biggest thing that was holding me back was fear of not knowing what that role actually looked like. So this may sound so crazy because I run a pretty large business for Starbucks, but I was like, I wonder if I'm going to know enough about business to speak at the regional vice president level about what they need to know, right? <laughs> and so I said, my boss, can I sit in on uh, your business reviews with your boss? And then I asked my mentor in, the, in New, uh, New York, can I sit in on your business reviews? And it was uh, so calming for me to leave those reviews and go, I actually know more than I think I know. So I think uh, at Brooke's point, you acknowledge you have a fear and anxiety, and then what's the thing you can do to kind of get past it? And I just think at Starbucks, we got such a great environment where people can be vulnerable and transparent and nobody expects perfect, uh, perfection. You just got to ask for that opportunity to see something different. Yeah, I can share a recent example too. Um, uh, in my role, I'm responsible for Western Mountain, which is 10,000 partners, but I'm not directly responsible for anybody, uh, which for me is uh, incredibly difficult. Um, so I, I consider moving a battleship in the pond. So the work I do doesn't really show up for like six, six months from now. So it's very difficult for me sometimes to find job satisfaction when I'm, I'm, I'm a driver. I like results. I like to see results quickly. I can't do that. Uh, but recently, uh, what's changed in that is my job is technically coach people that are kind of higher up on the hierarchy map. Um, some of them started to reach out and ask for advice, uh, which is really my job. Like Mark did the other day, just called me, hey, Dave, I just need some honest advice. And that really, it made me feel good. Um, so I think as I get better at my job, people are reaching out to me more, but it's still like every day for me is difficult because it's like 90% of it, I'm not seeing any output at all. Uh, but making sure that it, it's also me verbalizing that and telling people that, I think they help me through it. Say, all right, here's how I can utilize Dave more, uh, which is good for me. I just keep reminding yourself too, we all got stuff. So for me, um, I struggled for a while when I transitioned into this role and I couldn't figure out why. When I say this role, I mean into uh, Denver. And I couldn't figure out why. I kept asking myself, like, what's different? I was highly successful in the same job in a different market. You know, why am I struggling in this role? And it finally hit me when I was talking to uh, just somebody I care about. So uh, I have viewed leadership my whole life has been from my mother, very strong uh, female presence. My father was gone most of the time. And then when he was around, he was physically and verbally abusive. So when I transitioned into this role, I've only literally most of my career worked for female leaders. And then to work for a strong male leader, you would think, no big deal. <clears throat> but I viewed it as whenever he was giving the same type of coaching, I looked back into my childhood and I didn't even realize it was happening. Yeah. So I was responding in a way that was different to the same coaching that I had gotten in the past. So I would just remind yourself that we all got some crazy. We all got some <laughs> Sometimes you got to really, you got to really dig deep to even understand it. It's the same human being saying, or a different human being saying the same thing may land you differently because, and you don't realize why. But oftentimes, like I can remember sitting there going, is that really what it is? And yeah. You know, it was. It was just that for me. So, to this day, I still sit, I still take feedback much different, much better whenever I see my mother as a presence in front of me than when I see my father, just from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. And it, it's taken me time to realize that. And by realizing that, I'm now more receptive to it. Um, I would say that, similar to what Kelly was talking about, anytime you change position, there's the fear of the unknown. Um, when you move that from position to position, you're typically really good at what you did. <laughs> and then you go into learning and not knowing and feeling um, just lost a little bit. Um, and I think that what I've realized over time is that I get in my own way. Um, and uh, to what Haley was kind of speaking about earlier, being kind to yourself and your inner self-talk, um, being patient with yourself. If, you're not giving the advice uh, to yourself that you would to your closest friend. Um, you need to change that talk track inside. And I would say that's probably been my biggest one. I have one, one last question. Oh, can would you say what 
our biggest takeaway was from Greg's presentation? I'll jump in there, I, and I kind of reinforced what I kind of already felt. This role for me was really challenging because I'm on the phone with a lot. Uh, conference calls, video conference calls, a lot of meetings. Uh, and coming out of the DM role, where you're in different environments every day, different energy every day, you go to a store and it doesn't feel good, you find one that will. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All your children. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it reinforced like just changing your environment. So for me, I bought a stand up desk. I do most of my Fridays from standing up, but I'm not coming down. Um, you find ways. Like, we were laughing because all of us at the same time, our watch told us to stand up. <laughs> and then we were all like, should we stand up? <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh, it's not that you something like your phone affirmations. Our watch is the same way. So I just think it's all about creating different energy. I do think playing is a lot of fun, and you got to get out and find those things with your kids and find that energy and, you know, stuff that's kind of silly, like roller skating. I'm a, a control freak. Um, and so doing something that's, that you're not necessarily good at is uh, it's pretty, you know, humbling. So roller skating is that for me. So, um, you know, you just got to try and change your environment and, and keep the things fresh. I, uh, there was three things that stood out for, for me in, in growth as we kind of went through it. Uh, one, don't be afraid to fail. Um, I think we all have our insecurities, but I've never met anybody that's cheering for somebody to fail. Like, we're going to mess up. It's going to be okay. Generally, people lift you up and they don't put you down. So what did you learn from your failure? I think it's unbelievably important. Uh, a lot of people in this room can attest I fail quite a bit. Good at it. Uh, but I learn from it every time. I think the second thing um, that I took from it is really be solution oriented. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, but uh, the problems are easy. Uh, we all have them, we all got them. If you spend your time focusing how you're going to solve those problems, you're just going to be much better for it. Then the third thing there that I took is you got to ask. If you want to develop, you have to ask. You have to be your best advocate. Uh, it doesn't always work out, but I promise you, if you don't ask, you won't. The only reason I'm in, in this role. Is uh, part of my development is I had to connect with Steve. I literally told Steve, like, it's not very Starbucks talk, but like, I'm kind of bored in my role. I think the way I phrased it was, uh, I'm not challenged anymore. Uh, and a month later, I had this job. I literally just asked for something else, and somebody that believed in me found something else for me to do. And I didn't even know this job existed before Steve called me, hey, Dave, you want to interview for this? So it was just asked. Um, I took a ton away. Uh, I thought all of it was awesome, and I can't wait to go home and reflect, and I might have a new role model. Um, and also, um, that, that made her day. <laughs> but I think for me, solidifying my why, um, just kind of working through that, why I do what I do every day, why I am choosing to go to ASU. Um, I have three little girls, and I, it's super important to me that they grow up to be strong female leaders um, not suffering from all of the crazy cultural drama that we as females um, deal with on a daily basis. So um, coming to work every day and showing them what that looks like um, is super important to me. And I actually was having a conversation with my oldest and she um, was like, Mom, when are you going to quit your job? And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but you like dresses, so I have to work so that you dresses. <laughs> I would have summarized uh, the message for me is just uh, purposeful. So that's what I took away more than anything else was whatever you want to talk about, be purposeful in it. So if you're looking at your development, if you're looking at how you're reflecting on yourself, if you're looking at how you use the energy and time that you have, the, the layer that I saw her put across the entire message was just be purposeful in your time. So be thoughtful and purposeful of how and what you're doing versus just kind of letting things happen to you all the time. That's what makes it most fun. Well, thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. All right. Can you hit on again? Okay. Oh, we're not done yet. Yeah, we're not done. Yet. <laughs> uh, if you can work out wings, it's 
calendar and she looked at it. Everything matches everything. So um, I don't know why I never thought of scheduling that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having all those things that you want to accomplish in one day and then at the end of the day, just like you don't really want to accomplish anything else. Mm -hmm. But then scheduling it, it's like you're, you're providing yourself that time. Well, I think not just scheduling it, but protecting that time. Yeah. Because how often do you say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. Oh, I'm going to update my PDP. <laughs> oh, I'll connect with this person. We'll, we'll keep on this weekly cadence, but then stuff just hits the fan. And you're like, eh, can we cancel this one? Can we meet next week? Can we shorten it? Do we really need to talk? I really need to go to the gym. Um, and, you know, so how do you make yourself a priority and keep that appointment <coughs> with yourself? To really help yourself move forward and not just stay stagnant where you are right now. Oops. Yeah, it's funny. I just had an aha moment. This is, I was talking about being a mom, and it's funny. On Mother's Day, I worked at my store, and I got a mom's Mother's Day card from all of my partners. I'm kind of like the store mom. I thought oh, I don't have to frame it as I'm their mom. I'm their mentor, right? So I can I can look at it in a more you know my kids are grown up, but I can be a mom. I can be a mentor. Mm -hmm. to Perfect. I think for me, I I realize I'm excited to do some more risks and get out there. But quite frankly, I think I just realize I'm lazy a little bit. Like, <laughs> 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 Take a little piece. <laughs> today. Again, our exec board that really came up with the details of today, um, the total uh, WIN members uh, just brainstorming and coming up with this little development child for today. Really appreciate it. Um, also, our speakers today. I know you have very, very busy schedules, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to not only commit to yourselves and to us, but really impact our partners and hopefully inspiring them for the future. Um, Nate, did you leave? He did, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but Nate, just, uh, you know, brand new store manager, just getting out in front of everyone and leading us through a really great coffee tasting, which I think tied in really well with how the Women of Rwanda kind of tied into our theme. And then last but not least, Brooke Jean. Uh, it's, just, it's awesome to just see the difference between us living our professional lives in retail and now being able to connect outside of that and both following our passions. So I think we had many conversations about a lot of this stuff. So thank you very much for having me. Oh, yeah. So, so we are all done for the main event, if you will. Um, we do have a reservation at Jackson's right down off of Arapahoe. I believe it's on the sofa. Um, <laughs> Just say Starbucks, Megan, something, they'll point you to a room. Um, we'll provide some light appetizers with some munch, munching stuff. Um, any drinks or food outside of that is on you. Um, but it would be a great opportunity to just meet with everyone, chat a little bit, exchange numbers, find some new accountability partners. Um, Brooke will be there if you want to talk to her one on one. Uh, but yeah, time to open up. Can we walk there? No. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> 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 